as it happens, you've been working with parameters for quite some time. They just haven't had that name. Okay. So what I want you to think of, and I want you to um, just quickly draw up for me a set of axes. What I want you to think about is our old trusty friend, the unit circle. Here's the unit circle, center origin, radius, <coughs> radius one. Now, the reason why, you can remember from hopefully last year, but also this year when we were doing trig, the reason why the unit circle is so crucial is because it gives us a better way to define these guys rather than being lame and thinking about just right angle triangles, okay? Right angle triangles are very limited. For example, you can't have a zero degree angle in a right angle triangle, or you can't have a 90 degree angle in a right angle triangle, or you can't have anything bigger than a right angle in a right angle triangle because you break the angle sum of the triangle. So that's why we said this, right? So then we said, okay, look, if you measure from the positive x axis, going that way, okay? And you put up an angle like that, you call the angle theta, right? What you create is a right angle triangle that you can see the trig functions in, from which you get the fact that you can say the coordinates of that point on the circumference of the unit circle can be expressed rather than just like, ah, oh, three comma four, uh, it's the unit circle, uh, a half comma root three on two, something like that, okay? Instead, you can say, look, this point, the x and y coordinates are not so much related to each other as they are related to oh, wow. uh, <laughs> this angle. And the angle is the parameter. It's the one number that's actually changing things. So as I was saying, and let's get this formally down underneath this now, now that we have the language powerful enough to describe it, okay? In the unit circle, in the unit circle, right? What you've got is a new third measurement, theta, right? Theta is the parameter <coughs> upon which your x and y coordinates get their values, right? Their x and y coordinates can all be, can both be expressed in terms of theta, right? Upon which the x and y coordinates <laughs> depend. Okay? So another way of saying this is, right, if I said to you, okay, I want you to know where I am on the unit circle. What I could provide to you is two numbers. I could provide to you an x and a y. Okay? I could say, uh, all right, I'm at, um, I'm at zero, negative one. That's this point down here. So two numbers that tell me where I am. Okay? But if I know what the parameter is, if I understand this system and the way that it functions, just like my ice cream and sunscreen and temperature, okay, I only need one number. I only need the parameter. If I just say I'm at 270 degrees on the unit circle, that conclusively tells you where I am. Just like if I told you the temperature, that would conclusively tell you with just a single number what the sales of ice cream and sunscreen were like. Okay? So the way that we write this is, like you're used to seeing it up there in the coordinates. Okay? I would say x equals cos theta, y equals sine theta, okay? So because this is a pair of equations that involves the parameter theta, right? We call this pair of equations down here parametric equations. They're equations just like you've seen before, but they have a parameter in them, okay? So therefore, parametric equations. Now, you know the unit circle, you met the unit circle, way before this idea of like theta and redefining it, all that kind of thing. We know that these parametric equations are not the only way to express this set of points, right? What's the equation of the unit circle with just x's and y's? x squared plus y squared equals one, exactly. Uh, because the radius over here is one squared, right? So this equation here, because it's just x's and y's, it's just the coordinates in our Cartesian system, right? This is called the Cartesian equation. These two things are equivalent to each other in exactly the same way that I guess we could say up here I kind of have Cartesian equations, inverted commas, for sunscreen and ice cream. Equations in two variables. Whereas down here, 
these guys, because they introduce temperature, these are the parametric equations. See, there's the parameter, right? And of course, you guys know, this, this actually works because cos squared plus sine squared, of course, equals to one, right? So there's the example you've already been working with for a long time, okay? But you can uh, do this process, go from here to here, right? You can do that for a whole variety of functions, right? So this is called, <coughs> lots of words to do with the same thing. This is called, uh, her, I don't even know how to pronounce it. This is called parametrizing an equation, right? As in introducing a parameter, okay? That's what happens when you go from just x's and y's to introducing a t or a theta or whatever else. Okay? Whereas going in the opposite direction, right? Sometimes you get given the parameters. There could be a situation where I know two things, both relate to one thing. I can, if I like, cut out the middleman. I just want the two things in their relationship to each other. Maybe I don't care about temperature or theta. Okay. So going in the other direction is called, because you're getting rid of the parameter, it's called eliminating the parameter. Okay. So if you go from parametric equations and then you do something to it, like as we've seen in this case, squaring the two x and y's and then adding them together, right? that will get rid of the parameter. If, on the other hand, you want to add the parameter so you can work with them independently, then that's parametrizing. And you'll be asked to do both. Okay. So, what kind of shape have we been looking at most recently? Parabolas. Parabolas, right? Okay. So, you can parametrize more or less anything. Okay. So, Okay, so what I'm going to give you is I'm going to give you a pair of equations, an x and a y equation, parametric equations, for the parabola. I'm going to give them to you in a form that's a little bit unusual, but the reason for this particular form will become clear as we move forward further into this, okay, and also as we bring in our old friend calculus. So, yes, you should, you should recognize some weird things here. Anyhow. If I put these two together, right, I have the parametric equations here, right? So I'm interested in what Cartesian equation corresponds to this pair of things, right? By the way, just before we leave off these guys, right, what this is saying, just like on the unit circle, remember how we said, oh, there's a locus definition, and we usually say, oh, there's some point P that moves, and it's called XY, it's at XY. Well, now I have values for x and y. So instead of saying this, which is Cartesian, I would say this, which is parametric. Okay? Same idea, just expressed differently. So how would I go about going from here to here right? and combining these in a way that gets rid of the t? How do I get rid of the t? Okay. Well, let's just take this as um, equation 1. And equation two. If you're trying to eliminate a variable out of a set of simultaneous equations, because that's that's all that is, right? You can either use elimination or substitution, right? Based on what we've got here, I'm guessing substitution will be a more helpful kind of thing. It's not like oh, I've got a minus b and a plus b. You just add them and it's easy. Okay, I'm going to have to do something else. So let's take equation one. Let's rearrange it. If I make t the subject, so I can substitute it into the other guy, right? t is going to be equal to what? What do I divide both sides by? x on 2a, right? x on 2a. Okay. So I can take this guy, I'll call this 1a, right? I'm going to put that into equation 2. Let's do this substitution. Right? There's my t in there, so y will be equal to a times x on 2a squared. I've just replaced the t, that's all I've done. Right. And of course, simplifying this is pretty straightforward. Um, you've got a x squared on the top. What's on my denominator? Four uh, a squared. Don't forget to square both of them. Four a squared. You can see that I've got an a on the top and a pair of a's on the bottom. So that one will cancel, and we'll leave one behind. And you're like, 
I recognize this guy, right? I'm this is our old friend x squared equals 4ay, okay? So this is the reason why I gave you this particular pair of parametric equations, because they give us that particular Cartesian equation, which is useful to work with under locus. Now there are even more cool reasons for why this pair of equations is what we're going to use. They will come out in the coming days.